After the underwhelming opening of Disney's California Adventure, the Walt Disney Company refocused their revitalization efforts by investing over a billion dollars into the park. In 2012, the opening of Cars Land marked the completion of this effort, opening three new rides, Radiator Spring Racers, Luigi's Flying Tires, and Mater's Junkyard Jamboree, a unique family ride that whips riders back and forth and is a modern take on the teacups ride. Or is it? Welcome to Amusement Labs, where today I'll show you the history, construction, and technology behind Mater's Junkyard Jamboree. Make sure to stay to the end of the video for a contest. This video was sponsored by Levi Valentine, Felix Montesa, Brandon Wiggins, and Tyson D at patreon.com slash amusement labs. Get early access and more through the link below. Located at Disney's California Adventure, Mater's Junkyard Jamboree is a moderate thrill family flat ride located in the Cars Land section of the park. The ride takes place inside the junkyard of Tow Mater Towing and Salvage, the fictional small business from the movie franchise. This 90 second ride seats riders in tow trailers as baby tractors traverse four large turntables back and forth, whipping riders left and right along the way. Watching riders cross paths and weave around, guests may often question how it does this safely and consistently. Let me explain. As I hinted at earlier, there's more than meets the eye with Mater's Junkyard Jamboree. For some of you eagle-eyed Disney fans, you may recognize a smaller version of this in the same park, Francis's Ladybug Boogie, that used to reside in a Bugs Land. The rides are a modern take on a cuddle-up or vintage carnival ride from the 1920s. As odd as it sounds, Mater's Junkyard Jamboree rips a page from the amusement ride history by modernizing this over 100 year old ride. Originally produced by the Philadelphia Toboggan Company in the 30s, the Cuddle Up was a large teacup style mechanical ride that weaved riders around multiple turntables. Starting to sound familiar? The ride was extremely popular because of its scrambling near miss movements. The Cuddle Up used large gears that meshed together to align holes on the edge of turntables to shove the cups from one turntable to the next. The ride itself was actually based on the mechanics of a Maypole braider machine. Made by Italian rides manufacturer Zamperla, Mater's Junkyard Jamboree is a custom enlarged demolition derby flat ride produced exclusively for Disney. During its development, Walt Disney Imagineering meshed a classic whip ride, also from the same Cuddle Up era, with the ride. Junkyard Jamboree features two identical ride systems for capacity with a total of 22 whip vehicles, 11 on each system, patterned along the turntables. To understand the ride system better, we should first start with the vehicle assembly, which consists of two shuttle bars with small wheels on each end. On the bottom of each bar is a flat vertical metal fin that works into the transferring motion of the ride. Each shuttle bar hinges on one end to the central support column, like wings on a bird. This column then rises out from inside the mechanics of the ride to the rider vehicle. The additional whip vehicle hinges to this column and uses a gas dampener to prevent any hard jolts from the swing limit bumpers on the side of the spine of the whip vehicle. The weight of the riders rolls on two caster wheels located under the whip vehicle. To better explain the ride's mechanics, we're going to split it into three layers that will mesh together to create the weaving motion. Starting from the bottom, we have the switching layer, the loading layer, and on top we have the concealment layer. On the bottom of the ride's mechanics is the switching layer that interacts with a pair of vertical fins on each vehicle assembly. As a vehicle makes its way around whipping riders up above, there's a lot going on down below. When a vehicle reaches the handoff point where it's handed off to the next turntable, a toggle wheel flips left and right, directing the pair of fins from one side to the other. The wheels on the sides of the shuttle bars and fins run inside a circular channel that helps them follow the turntable around. At handoff points, the channel suddenly becomes a straight line that points to the channel of the next turntable. 
At this point, the channels form a slim X shape which directs the vehicles off. Due to the sharp transition at the center of the X and the toggle wheel, the shuttle bars are not able to remain on the turntable and must follow the straight line in the intersection to the next turntable. Above the switching layer is the loading layer. This layer of the ride consists of four large turntable spoke structures that rotate during the ride. The two outer turntable structures feature five spokes while the two inner structures feature six. This ensures that there is always one empty space in front of each vehicle for the vehicle ahead of riders to occupy. Each spoke of the structure has two large eye beams that reach out from the center to where each vehicle will sit. When a vehicle is pushed over from one turntable to the next, the shuttle bars slot into the spoke arms where they are held. One of the six or five spoke arms will only grab one of the shuttle bars, not both. When the handoff happens, the arm grabs the shuttle bar that was not being held by the previous turntable spoke arm since there's equipment in the way. These massive structures use a motor with rotation control to ensure that they are in place to receive the available shutter bar to clamp onto. The nudging motion at the handoff point releases the shuttle bar clamp, pushes the shuttle bar off the spoke arm, and then the other shuttle bar is clamped by the receiving spoke arm. As you can see, the mechanics of the ride are quite complex and can potentially be dangerous for guests. So on top of this is the concealment layer. To make loading faster and safer for guests, four stationary circular plates are placed at the center of the turntables supported in the center. Wide flat ring shaped platforms are then supported by and rotate with the spoke arms. Patterned along the edges of the spoke platforms are slotted openings to the basement of the ride. Through these slots, the central support column for the vehicle protrudes up and out. Unlike the spoke arms, these slots will align at the handoff point, forming a pill-shaped slot. The column can then slide over to the other side of the slot before separating. When a slot is not occupied by a column, a spring-loaded cover slides in from underneath and is pushed over when the column slides over. To better explain the ride's mechanics, I've created this simplified functional model of the ride. As you can see, there's three distinct layers, just like in the real ride. The switching layer, the loading layer, and the consumment layer. Here we have a vehicle assembly with a bumper on either side of the central column. These bumpers are nudged around and follow a central channel, just like the shuttle bars. The channel is formed by these teardrop-shaped plates and as you can see, form a slim X shape which makes it impossible for the handoff to not happen. That's the switching layer. In much the same way, these gears contain a slot for the vehicle assembly to slot and clamp onto as they go around. This is a loading layer. Finally, we have the turntable surface that rides along with the motion of the vehicles and contains the pattern slots that align with the handoff points to let the column slide over. This is the concealment layer. So now we can put it all together. The vehicles under the surface have two shuttle bars with two wheels each that hinge on the central column. Each shuttle bar has a vertical fin attached to the underside of the bars. As the ride begins, all platforms and spoke arms need to move together. The wheels on the shuttle bar will follow the underground channel around the turntable. At the handoff point, the channel straightens and the toggle wheel bumps the shuttle bar fins to the other turntable. This unlocks the shuttle bar clamp and slides the vehicle to the other side, where the receiving spoke arm clamps onto the other shuttle bar. So that's roll, unclamp, slide, clamp, roll, unclamp, slide, clamp, roll. During our ride in theme tractor trailers, we can hear one of multiple different songs performed by Larry the Cable Guy, the voice of Mater. This then repeats for 90 seconds, sending riders whipping back and forth until the ride slows down and guests can disembark. 
This innovative and rare rendition of a century-old ride is a wonderful family-oriented addition that is both gentle and fun for all ages. Mater's Junkyard Jamboree has shown that with a little imagination, a ride system of its age can absolutely stand the test of time. And that's how Mater's Junkyard Jamboree works. If you learned something and would like to see more How It Works videos, please subscribe and find the playlist above. You can also support what we do with early access and more on Patreon. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the parks.